Austrian railways are often praised for their overall efficiency and strong customer orientation. The trains in Austria are known for their punctuality, the citizens are among the most frequent rail users in Europe, and the country ranks as one of Europe's leaders in rail investment. But we won't bore you with all the details. You can learn more in our dedicated video on Austrian railways. What's even more fascinating, however, lies beneath this clockwork-like system. One of the most forward-thinking and self-sufficient energy supply systems in the global railway sector. Unlike most countries where railway companies use the traction power produced in national power plants and from the national power grid, Austria's National Rail Infrastructure Company, OBB Infrastructure AG, manages the entire electricity supply chain internally. This includes not only the transmission and distribution of electricity, but what is most incredible, also the generation of energy which moves the trains across the country. This approach has allowed OBB to create a highly integrated and sustainable railway power system, unmatched in Europe and the world, in terms of its efficiency and environmental impact. With the majority of Austria's rail network electrified, around 73%, and considering that, for example, more than 90% of passenger trains run on electric energy, the reliance on a stable and clean electricity becomes essential. OBB has delivered on this requirement by becoming not just a railway company, but also an energy company in its own right. The most remarkable Austrian railway fact from recent years is that since 2018, 100% of the electricity used to power Austria's trains comes from renewable energy sources. This puts Austria at the forefront of the transition to green transport and sets a powerful example of how transport can be aligned with global environmental policy goals. With that in mind, let's dive deeper into this subject, starting with the explanation of how electricity starts its journey from generation power plants and high voltage power grid via catenary system and contact wire to finally reach trains pantographs and motors. Before we do that, for those who are not familiar, we must share some exciting news. After years of research, writing and countless hours of work behind the scenes, our first official Railways Explained ebook is available for purchase. The book brings together 100 carefully crafted stories from our videos, spread across more than 600 pages, offering a unique, structured journey through the fascinating world of railways. We're truly proud of this milestone and believe it's a valuable resource for all rail professionals, enthusiasts, students, and anyone curious about how railways work. The book is now available at a price of $35, which we believe is accessible to anyone who wants to have their own edition of Railways Explained. The link to purchase is available in the description. In railway systems, the energy supply process begins at power plants, typically thermal, hydroelectric or nuclear, where electricity is generated using various types of generators at relatively high voltages and a standard frequency of 50 Hz. After generation, the electricity is stepped up in specialized transformer facilities and fed into the national transmission grid at high voltages, usually around 110. 220 or 400 kV, which are suitable for long-distance transmission. As the electricity travels closer to areas served by the railway network, often far from the original power plants, it is transformed again at railway-specific substations. Here the voltage is converted to levels suitable for railway systems, typically 25 kV AC, 15 kV AC, or in some cases 3 kV DC. These voltages are used to supply the railway catenary lines, which run above the tracks and provide power to the trains. At this stage, the electricity may still be at the standard frequency of 50 Hz. However, in countries like Germany and Austria, it is converted to 16.7 Hz using rotary or static frequency converters, as their rail systems operate on a different frequency. The overhead catenary lines deliver electricity directly to the train's pantograph, which collects the power and routes it to onboard transformers and converters. These systems adapt the power for use by the train's traction motors. 
the rail itself serves as the return path for the electric current, completing the circuit. This multi-stage process from generation to transmission, transformation and final delivery via overhead lines ensures a safe, stable and efficient power supply for railway operations, supporting reliable and continuous train traffic across the network. If you're interested in more details about railway electrification systems, feel free to check out one of our previous videos, which focuses entirely on this topic. Now that we've explained the concept of the traction power system, let's return our focus to Austria. As previously mentioned, one of Austria's most remarkable achievements is that the electricity powering its railways is entirely generated and managed by the railway company itself. UBB Infrastructure operates a dedicated traction power grid, fully independent from the national grid and purpose-built for railway operations. This specialized network stretches over 2000 km and consists of substations, transformers and frequency converters, ensuring a stable and reliable supply of electricity at the required voltage and frequency for every train. At the core of this system is renewable hydropower. OBB owns and runs nine hydroelectric power plants, strategically located near major rivers and along key railway corridors. Collectively, these plants produce around 1.5 billion kilowatt hours of electricity each year, enough to cover more than one third of the total energy demand of Austria's railway network. To meet the remaining demand, UBB sources electricity from four partner hydropower plants dedicated exclusively to railway supply supplemented by other renewable sources like solar and wind power. Together they form one of the most self-sufficient and sustainable railway energy systems in the world. The nine hydroelectric power plants currently operated by OBB include Oberwellach II and Rosenbach in Carinthia, Fulpmes in Tirol, Utendorf Tipord, Utendorf Tud, Schneiderau and Enzinger Boden near Salzburg, as well as Polersee and Braz in the state of Vorarlberg. A tenth facility, Tower Moose, also located near Salzburg, is currently under construction and is expected to be commissioned in 2026. These power plants vary in capacity. While the largest can produce 15 to 20 megawatts or more, the smaller facilities still play a vital role by supporting regional sections of the grid and balancing the overall system load. However, because Austria's railway network operates at a unique frequency of 16.7 Hz, not all electricity generated by these hydropower stations can be used directly. Some plants produce electricity at the standard grid frequency of 50 Hz, which must first be converted before being integrated into the traction power network. This is done at eight converter stations run by OBB infrastructure, including key sites in Selstal and Langenwang. These converter facilities receive 50 Hz electricity from the National Transmission Network, or OBB's own generation sources, and convert it to 16.7 Hz. At the same time, the voltage is stepped up to either 55 kV or 110 kV. Once converted, the power is transmitted through OBB's internal high-voltage grid, and delivered to local railway substations, where the voltage is reduced to 15 kV before being supplied to the overhead catenary system. Across Austria, 65 such substations are strategically distributed along the railway network to maintain consistent and reliable power delivery. An additional feature of the system is the use of eight mobile electric substations, also operated by OBB. These mobile units provide temporary power during maintenance work or act as emergency backups in the event of failures in fixed infrastructure. Electricity usage is precisely measured using certified metering equipment installed both on board trains and throughout the network. This data is essential for accurate billing, especially since the infrastructure is used by multiple operators, both public and private, such as OBB Personenverkehr, Rail Cargo Austria and Westbahn. Train operators are billed based on their actual electricity consumption, measured in kilowatt hours rather than estimates. Because OBB generates the majority of its electricity from hydropower, 
which has low marginal costs after the initial infrastructure is built, it can offer competitive and stable electricity prices over the long term. These transparent pricing models that reflect generation costs, infrastructure maintenance and energy market conditions further incentivize the operators to optimize their consumption and even the manner of train driving. Yes, the drivers are trained to use energy-efficient driving techniques, and new rolling stock includes regenerative braking systems that feed energy back into the grid during deceleration, further optimizing consumption. This closed-loop system, where the infrastructure manager generates, converts, distributes and even measures the consumption of its own power, in our view allows for greater operational control and long-term cost stability as OBB is not dependent on external electricity markets or volatile fossil fuel prices. While hydropower remains the dominant source of electricity for trains in Austria, OBB has increasingly turned to solar and wind energy to diversify its renewable energy portfolio. Namely, in the period from 2020 onwards, OBB installed dozens of small solar generators in creative and space-efficient locations, but also there is their Hofline wind farm, which alone produces 6.75 gigawatt hours of annual energy. One of the most visible strategies in terms of green energy by the OBB is the installation of solar panels practically everywhere on the rooftops of railway stations, workshops, depots and other suitable places. In many cases, the roofs of large railway buildings in Austria were previously unused, but they now host solar modules that feed directly into the nearby grid. The electricity generated this way is consumed locally, reducing the load on long-distance transmission infrastructure and cutting down on transmission losses. Another innovative approach involves mounting solar panels on noise barriers along railway tracks. These barriers, which are often several meters tall and run for kilometers alongside busy lines, now double as clean energy generators. By integrating solar technology into an infrastructure that already occupies space along the tracks, OBB maximizes the utility of existing assets. To be honest, the total contribution of solar power to the supply system is still relatively small, but not negligible around 3%, and it is growing steadily. Projects currently in development aim to increase this share significantly, with several megawatts of new capacity scheduled to come in the next few years. Actually, OBB has announced the intention to invest around 1 billion euros in renewable energy and in hydropower, wind power and photovoltaics by 2030. This is intended to generate an additional 280 gigawatt hours from OBB's own hydroelectric power plants, photovoltaic and wind power plants, which is about as much as 70,000 households in Austria consume on average. Also, to increase energy independence, UBB plans to increase its own electricity production from renewable sources to form around 33% to 80% of the total traction current needs by 2030. This will be achieved through additional investments in hydroelectric power plants, such as the Tower Moose power plant, as well as expanding the capacity of solar and wind power plants. Austria's renewable railway power system has a significant positive impact on the environment. With over 70% of the network electrified and 100% of the electricity sourced from renewables, Austria's railways avoid more than 4 million tons of CO2 emissions each year compared to diesel-powered alternatives. Looking ahead, Austria plans to increase the share of internally generated green electricity to 80% by 2030. This will involve expanding solar and small-scale hydroelectric capacity, developing smart energy storage systems to manage fluctuations in supply, and exploring hydrogen and battery electric trains for the remaining non-electrified routes. This integrated and sustainable model not only reduces environmental impact, but also shields Austria's railways from geopolitical energy risks, enhancing national energy security. As Europe moves toward decarbonizing its transport and energy sectors, Austria stands as a leading example of how strategic investment in public infrastructure 
can deliver long-term environmental and technical benefits. If you enjoyed this video and would like to support our work, consider purchasing our ebook, joining us on Patreon, or becoming a channel member. You can also make a one time donation via PayPal. Every contribution helps us continue creating high quality railway content. All relevant links are in the description below. Thank you for watching, and as always, stay on track with Railways Explained.